morning guys it's me professor d and welcome back to my channel on this video i'm going to be covering the difference between dementia and delirium if you haven't done so already guys please be sure to like and subscribe below make sure you press that red notification button so you'll be notified every single time a new video is released okay guys without any further ado let's get started a geriatric nurse is teaching students about the development of delirium in older adults which statement by the nurse is most accurate? A, taking multiple medications may lead to adverse interactions or toxicity. B, age-related cognitive changes may lead to alterations in mental status. C, lack of rigorous exercise may lead to decreased cerebral blood flow. Or D, decreased social interaction may lead to profound isolation and psychosis. I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. Okay guys, so we're talking about delirium, not dementia, delirium in older adults. And the correct answer is A, taking multiple medications may lead to adverse interactions or toxicity. So guys, first off, let me make sure you understand the difference, the major difference between delirium and dementia. When it comes to delirium, delirium is short term. Delirium is something that happens acutely. Delirium is something that is reversible. Delirium is something that has an underlying cause. That means the minute you can figure out what the underlying cause is and you correct it, all of a sudden the patient's not um, confused anymore. Where dementia is the opposite. Instead of being acute, it's chronic. Instead of being reversible, it's progressive. That means as time goes on, it gets even worse. Guess what? There is no fixing the issue. It gets worse, okay? As time goes on, it gets worse, okay? Um, there's different uh, types of dementia. There's different things that cause dementia. But at the end of the day, the result is still the same, which is going to be confusion, the patient's going to get to a point where they're not even going to be safe to be alone and there's no way to reverse it, okay? So anyway, let's get back to this question. Um, the answer is A. So let's talk about some risk factors for um, delirium. Remember, delirium is reversible. You just got to figure out what's wrong with the patient, fix that, and the patient's good to go. So what are some um, things that can cause delirium? Polypharmacy, and that's our answer right there, taking many medications. Many medications can cause acute confusion. Remember something about the geriatric population. Number one, those kidneys aren't functioning the way they used to when they were younger. Number two, the liver is not functioning the way it used to when the, the patient was younger. So those two organs, the liver that's responsible for metabolizing these medications and the kidneys that's uh, responsible for excreting the medications, they're not working the way they used to. It's wear and tear of the body. So what do you think happens? The patient get can get a toxic level of drugs because as they get older, they need less of a medication in their body because effects stay in their, the drugs stay in their body for so much longer. So imagine this happening to an elderly patient and they're taking a whole bunch of medications. It's very easy for them to get a toxic buildup and that will cause delirium. What else can cause delirium? Infection. Matter of fact, um, acute confusion in an older patient, the very first thing you better be thinking about is a possible infection, right? Illness, fluid and electrolyte imbalance, right? All of those are different things that can increase the risk of a patient getting delirium, not dementia, delirium. And those risk factors are very important. You do need to know them. All right, next question. A husband has agreed to admit his spouse diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease to a long-term care facility. He's expressing feelings of guilt and symptoms of depression. Which appropriate nursing diagnosis and subsequent intervention would the nurse document? A, dysfunctional grieving, Alzheimer's support group. B, altered thought process, Alzheimer's support group. C, major depressive episode, psychiatric referral. Or D, caregiver role strain, psychiatric referral. Okay, guys, and the correct answer is A, dysfunctional grieving, Alzheimer's support group. So let's break that down. Let's talk about the first part, which is uh, dysfunctional grieving. Why is it dysfunctional grieving? Um, this patient 
the patient spouse, I should say, is feeling guilty. But why is he feeling guilty? He's feeling guilty for getting his wife care that he can no longer provide. Okay, so that's dysfunctional grieving. That um, spouse is going to need a professional to talk to them and walk them through this whole situation for them to understand that they're doing the best thing that they can for their spouse at this stage to keep them safe. So they definitely have dysfunctional grieving. That's the first part. The second part is they need a support group. They need a, to be with a group of other spouses or even children of the patients who are going through the same thing so that they can get perspectives from people who are going through the same thing. And more importantly, they can find out how to get through it. Why? Because in that support group, they'll be meeting other people who have gotten through it and they can find out what they did and they can also get therapy at the same time. So that is why that's the correct answer. A client diagnosed with vascular dementia is discharged to home under the care of his wife. Which information should cause a nurse to question the client's safety? A, the wife works from home in telecommunication. B, the client has worked the night shift his entire career. C, his wife has minimal support, excuse me, his wife has minimal family support. D, the client smokes one pack of cigarettes per day. And guys, if you're new to my channel, if you feel like I'm going too fast, just go ahead, press the pause button, think of your answer, formulate what you think it should be, and then go ahead and press uh, play when you're ready. So the correct answer for this is D, the client smokes one pack of cigarettes per day. Why Professor D is a D? Well, let's go to the question. What kind of dimension does this patient have? It says vascular dementia. Whenever you see that word vascular, what does that mean? Vessel, right? This patient has decreased blood flow to what? The brain. Why decreased blood flow? Because of what? The vessels. Are you following me? What does smoking do? It causes vasoconstriction. What happens when there's vasoconstriction? Decreased blood flow. So now you have a patient that already has dementia due to decreased blood flow to the brain, and you're going to put them in the household with somebody that smokes that's going to cause even more vasoconstriction? Come on. That's why that's our priority. Okay? And let me tell you something, because I used to write these exams. These test writers... This is how they write. This is how they want you to think. This is where your critical thinking comes in. They're going to give you A, but they expect you to get to D. They expect you to go from A, B, C, and to get to the correct answer, which is D. All right? There's a reason that they told us that the patient has vascular dementia. They could have just said the patient has dementia. They purposely told you what kind of dementia that patient had to see if you understood what was the risk factor for that type of dementia. All right, moving on. A client diagnosed with Alzheimer's dementia can no longer ambulate, does not recognize family members, and communicates with agitated behaviors and incoherent verbalizations. The nurse recognizes these symptoms as indicative of which stage of this illness. A, late confusion, B, early dementia, uh, C, middle dementia, or D, late dementia. And the correct answer, guys, is late dementia. And they gave us lots of clues for us to know that this is late and not early or middle. So if we go back to the question, they're telling us that they can no longer ambulate. So they used to be able to walk, but they can't even walk anymore. Their brain has uh, decreased to the point that they don't even know how to walk anymore. Let's keep going. They don't recognize family members. That's our second clue. Communicates with agitated behaviors and incoherent verbalizations. So what are they doing? They're frustrated. They're frustrated because they can't even communicate because their brain can no longer even form those ideas to tell them what, to come out, what words to come out of their mouth. That's late stage dementia. At late stage dementia, the patient can see a toilet bowl and they'll physically be thirsty and they don't even recognize the toilet bowl 
for what it is. They just see the water and they may drink out of it. Or it may be so bad that the patient's thirsty and they'll see a glass of water and they don't even recognize that the water is to drink. Okay, so let's talk about the other ones, late confusion. They just put that in to throw you off. We have early dementia. Early dementia is the very beginning where, you know, patients has these signs and symptoms of little forgetfulness here or there, but they're able to hide it because it's um, not that far gone. You know, they might um, forget uh, um important dates such as birthdays, something like that, but it's just little forget forgetting here and there. It's still something that they can hide, right? Then you have middle dementia. That is where they start to um, forget family members and they start to forget um, things that are um, long-term. Where early they will forget, you know, they have the short-term memory, they forget things that, you know, happened maybe last week or a few days ago, but in the middle, they, that's when they start to forget the long term, right? But when they get to a late stage, that is the worst one. That is where, you know, they, for, they can forget how to uh, speak. They can forget how to eat. They can forget how to walk. They are a safety issue, okay? Safety is a number one priority for these types of patients, okay? A client is diagnosed with a late stage Alzheimer's dementia. To address the client's symptoms, which nursing intervention should take priority? A, improve cognitive status by encouraging involvement in social activities. B, decrease social isolation by providing group therapies. C, promote dignity by providing comfort, safety, and self-care measures. Or D, facilitate communication by providing assistive devices. So the correct answer, guys, is C, promote dignity by providing comfort, safety, and self-care measures. If you had to choose a one word out of uh, that answer C to make it correct, what would it have been? Safety. That is your number one priority for those patients that are in late stage. They cannot do anything for themselves, okay? Safety is your number one priority. So let's look at our other choices. You have A, improved cognitive, cognitive status. Stop. I literally can't even. Stop it. Did I not just tell you that dementia is progressive? As time goes on, it gets worse. So what is this? Talk about improving cognitive status. How? How? It's not going to happen. This patient has dementia. Not only do they have dementia, which is progressive. As time goes on, it gets worse. They've got late stage dementia. Forget it. That ship has sailed. Okay. Choice two, decrease social isolation by providing group therapies. We're all for isolate, um, isolation. We're all for socialization. But guess what? That does not take priority over safety. Never, ever, ever. Choice uh, four, or D, I should say, facilitate communication by providing assistive devices. Number one, that's not a priority. Number two, you gave them those devices. This patient's in late stage. They probably wouldn't even know what to do with it anyway. So your correct answer is C, safety, 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 and again, safety. A client's experiencing progressive changes in memory that has interfered with personal, social, and occupational functioning. The client exhibits poor judgment and has a short attention span. The nurse should recognize this as these as classic signs of which condition? A, mania. B, delirium. C, dementia. Or D, Parkinsonism. Or par Parkinsonism. Guys, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know my pronunciation is horrible, so don't worry about it. As long as I got it up here, we're good. So the correct answer, guys, is dementia. Dementia. Look at the, um, I'm sorry, I keep looking to my right. We're in the middle of a tropical depression and the power keeps going in and out. So I'm trying to hurry up and get this video out before um, all the power shuts off. So I'm looking out the window trying to see what's going on. I really shouldn't be close to the window, but what are we going to do? Okay, so let's talk about dementia, guys. 
they gave us some hints in this question to make us know that this is dementia we're dealing with. Number one, progressive changes. Didn't I tell you that dementia is progressive? That means that time go, as time goes on, it gets worse. There is no reversing this. That's our first clue. And then it says that's interfered with personal, social, occupational functioning. They're no longer able to function the way that they used to because uh, cognitively they're starting to what? Deteriorate. Uh, third um, clue, it says that they're exhibiting poor judgment. They're having a short attention span. This is dementia we're dealing with. Now let's look at our other choices so you guys can know why they're wrong. A is mania. What's mania? That is when this patient is all over the place. They are on a constant high. You know, like the bipolar patients, when they're in the manic um, uh, phase, they're talking a mile a minute. They can't sit down. They're all over the place, right? So that's mania. That's not what um, this uh, description is. Then you have B, delirium. Well, we know this can't be delirium because in the question, it told us that what's happening to the patient is progressive. It happens slowly and um, um, over time it gets worse. But with delirium, delirium is abrupt. It's acute, okay? It's not progressive. And by the way, don't forget what else I told you about delirium. Delirium is what? Reversible, where um, dementia is not. So delirium is not the answer. And then you have Parkinsonism. Parkinsonism, that's when the patient has those fine tre uh, tremors, that's where they have that gait instability and falls is a big precaution for the patients with Parkinsonism. And that's not what we're dealing with. What we're dealing with in this question is dementia. A client diagnosed recently with Alzheimer's disease is prescribed Aricet. The client's spouse inquires, how does this work? Will this cure him? What is the appropriate nursing response? A, this medication delays the destruction of acetylcholine, a chemical in the brain necessary for memory process. Although most effective in early stages, it serves to delay but not stop the progression of the dementia. B, this medication encourages production of acetylcholine, a chemical in the brain necessary for memory processes. It delays the progression of the disease. Choice C, this medication delays the destruction of dopamine, a chemical in the brain necessary for memory processes. Although most effective in early stages, it serves to delay but not stop the progression of dementia. Choice D. This medication encourages production of dopamine, a chemical in the brain necessary for memory processes. It delays the progression of the disease. And the only correct answer is A, guys. This medication delays the destruction of acetylcholine. And acetylcholine, acetylcholine is needed for memory processes. Okay? Choice B, C, and D are all incorrect. Choice B, this medication encourages the production of acetylcholine. No, it doesn't. It just um, stop, it, not even stop, it slows down the destruction of acetylcholine, but it does not cause production, so that's wrong. Um, choice C, it delays the destruction of dopamine. No, nope, has nothing to do with the dopamine, and that's why D is wrong as well. It doesn't encourage the production of dopamine as well, either. What it does is slow down the destruction of acetylcholine, okay? Which symptoms should a nurse identify that differentiates clients diagnosed with dementia from clients diagnosed with mood disorders? A, altered sleep. B, altered concentration. C, altered memory. Or D, impaired psychomotor activity. And the correct answer is C, impaired memory memory. So um, impaired memory, this is the only one out of this group of um, symptoms that I'm looking at that does not affect mood disorders. So you know your mood disorders like your, um, your depression or your bipolar, any of those mood disorders. Let's look at our other choices. Altered sleep. Yes, we can have altered sleep and mood disorders. If the patient's um, depressed, they may want to sleep all day. 
if they have bi if, if they're bipolar and they're they're in the manic phase they may not sleep at all right but they're in the depression phase they may sleep all the time so a you can see in mood disorders and you can also see in um dementia b altered concentration well obviously you see that in um dementia but you can also see that in mood disorders right the patients with who are severely depressed they can't concentrate on anything or the patient that's going through bipolar if they're in the manic phase they're all over the place you can't get them to sit there for a minute to concentrate on something and then you have choice d impaired psychomotor activity absolutely this can affect um dementia but it can also affect mood disorders where the patient won't move at all if they're severely depressed right but impaired memory you don't see that in mood disorders okay so any of the mood disorders that i mentioned you will not see impaired memory if you see impaired memory there's a secondary um process going on it's not due to the mood disorder at what age at what age <laughs> at what time during a 24-hour period should a nurse expect clients diagnosed with alzheimer's to exhibit more pronounced symptoms of dementia a when they first awaken b in the middle of the night C, at twilight, or D, after taking medications? Okay, and the correct answer is C, at twilight. So guys, this is what's known as sundowning, and we normally see this in the middle stage of dementia, okay? So what happens is, as the sun starts to go down, the confusion starts to go up, all right? Now, let's look at our other choices. A, when they first awaken. B, in the middle of the night. D, after taking medications. All of those can be attributed to what? Delirium, not dementia. Remember delirium? That's the one that has an underlying cause? Well, think about it. If it's an elderly patient and they're woken up in the middle of the night, at first, they might be confused. It makes sense. Or when they wake up in the morning, the first thing when they wake up in the morning and they open their eyes, they might have slight confusion. Or after taking medications. Remember what I told you about the liver and the kidneys? That can cause confusion, right? But um, see, that at twilight, that's not attributed to the de uh, delirium. That's dementia. That's what's known as sundowning. I need to get new glasses. I can hardly see. Okay. A client diagnosed with Alzheimer's dementia exhibits progressive memory loss, diminished cognitive functioning, and verbal aggression upon experiencing frustration. Which nursing intervention is most appropriate? A. Schedule structured daily routines. B. Minimize environmental lighting. C. Organize a group activity to present reality. Or D. Explain the consequences for aggressive behavior. And the correct answer is A, schedule structured daily routines. And guys, I don't mean to compare these uh, types of patients to uh, preschoolers, but I just want to give you an example just so it makes sense to you, okay? Just like preschoolers, they need a set routine. Have you ever gone to a preschool? They eat breakfast at the same time every single day. 9 a.m. every single day, breakfast. Snack time, 9.15, every single day. Nap time, 12 noon, every single day. Recess, 1 o'clock, every single day. Story time, 2 o'clock, every single day. It's structured, it's routine. Have you ever tried to break a toddler's routine? They will lose their minds. Why? Because they thrive off of that structured environment. These patients that have dementia need a structured environment because what happens is when they don't have structure, it frustrates them. And when they get frustrated, the aggression comes out. Okay? So to decrease the aggression, you decrease the frustration. And one of the things you can do is give them structure. So that's what you want to do. Let's look at our other choices. B, minimize environment. Let me tell you something. Let me make sure you can see me. Look at me, my eyeball, when I say this to you. You better make sure you have a good lighting for these types of patients okay 
All right. Why? Because these patients are safety risks. Okay. The last thing you want is a fall on this patient. What did I tell you about as the sun goes down? The confusion goes up. Okay, so you want to make sure you have good lighting. You want to make sure that you keep your patients safe. So you absolutely are not going to minimize environmental lighting. You better make sure you have good lighting for your patients. Okay. C, organized group activity to present reality. My friend, that ship has sailed. Present reality, that's gone. However, group activities, great. Socialization, great. But that does not take priority over A, which is giving them that um, structure because giving them that structure decreases the frustration, which decreases aggression. When that patient has aggression, who do you think they're gonna have aggression on? You and the other patients around them. So you want to keep everybody safe. And what was our last choice? Explain the consequences. You're wasting your time. That ship has sailed. Remember, cognitive functioning has severely declined, okay? So at this point, our priority for this patient is safety, okay? So A is the correct answer. After a week of continuous mental confusion, an older African-American client is admitted with a preliminary diagnosis of Alzheimer's dementia. What should cause the nurse to question this diagnosis? A, Alzheimer's dementia does not typically occur in African-Americans. B, the symptoms presented are more indicative of Parkinsonism. C, the si I'm sorry, C, Alzheimer's dementia does not develop suddenly. Or D, there's been no T3 or T4 level evaluation order. And I'm so proud of you. I know you guys all got this correct. The correct answer is C, Alzheimer's dementia does not develop suddenly, right? Look at the question. It says after a week. That is suddenly. That's something that's acute. So you should suspect delirium, not dementia. Remember, dementia is insidious. What does insidious mean? That means something that's sneaky. You know, it happens very slowly, just creep, creep, crep up on you. You're like, oh, where'd you come from? Okay. It happens slowly over time. It's insidious. It's progressive. It's irreversible. This just happened a week ago. No, that's acute. You should suspect delirium. A client diagnosed with Alzheimer's dementia has impairments of memory and judgment and is incapable of performing activities of daily living. Which nursing intervention should take priority? A, present evidence of objective reality to improve cognition. B, design a bulletin board to represent the current season. C, label the client's room with name and number. D, assist with bathing and toileting. And the correct answer is D, assist with bathing and toileting. How do we know that's the answer? If you go back to the question, yes, the patient has um, impairments of memory and judgment, and that's why they're what? Incapable of performing ADLs. They cannot brush their teeth. They cannot take a bath. They cannot put on their clothes. If they can't do it, who's going to do it for them? You. That's our priority because that's the problem that's presented to us in the question. We're going to help them with their ADLs. Let's look at our wrong answer choices. A. Present evidence of objective reality to improve cognition. What did I tell you about dementia? Is there any improving in cognition? No. Dementia is irreversible. It's progressive. It's only going to get worse. So that's wrong. Choice B, design a bulletin board to represent current season. That's great. That's wonderful. But that's not going to take priority over the ADLs for that patient. Okay? Who cares about them knowing that it's fall if they haven't brushed their, their, their teeth in three weeks? You don't want to know in the older patients, um, one of the biggest risks of them getting upper respiratory infections oral hygiene, not brushing their teeth, right? So they eat, they eat, they eat, food gets stuck in the mouth, now staying in the mouth, they haven't brushed their teeth. And it sits there and it festers day after day, 
week after week now guess what starts to grow bacteria that bacteria creeps from their mouth and goes all the way down to their lungs before you know it that patient has pneumonia because of bad oral hygiene yeah so our priority absolutely is adl so yes it's wonderful to do boards and calendars but that doesn't take priority our next um choice uh label the client's room with a uh, name and number i know about number not so much a name we got hipaa going on um next choice d which is our correct answer you want to help them with the adls that's going to take priority and we are down to our last question this time just went by so quickly guys an older client has recently moved to a nursing home the client has trouble concentrating and socially isolates. A physician believes the client would benefit from medication therapy. Which medication should the nurse expect the physician to prescribe? A. Haldol, B. Aricet, C. Valium, or D. Zoloft. I hope you didn't choose B because the answer is D, Zola, which is an SSRI, it's an antidepressant. Go back to the question. They recently moved to a nursing home. They're having trouble concentrating and they're socially isolating themselves. This patient's going through depression. You know the number one diagnosis among the geriatric, um, uh, well, the number one um, psych diagnosis among the older population is depression. You gotta think about it. I want you to just imagine this for a moment. You've been a nurse practitioner or a registered nurse or a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant all your life. And then you retire and you get older and your kids are out the house. They have their own kids. They have their own jobs to worry about you're retired so for 30 40 whatever amount of years your identity was your profession you don't have that anymore anyone that sees you they just see you as an old person now you have this diagnosis you move into a nursing home okay so you've lost your independence you're not living in your home anymore you're living in this new environment trouble concentrating that's a symptom of depression and you're socially isolating yourself so zoloft absolutely um Depression is the number one dis psych disorder that we see, especially in patients that have dementia, okay? So that's what we expect the doctor to order. Let's look at our other choices. A, Haldol, that's for the antipsychotic, such as patients um, having hallucinations, patients with schizophrenic. B, Aricet, that's for um, the patient with dementia. But the problem here that they've given us the problem is not the dementia, is not it? Is it? What's the problem? The problem is the depression. So that's what we expect the doctor to address. Choice C, uh, Valium, that's a sedative. Sometimes it's used as an anti-anxiety um, medication. And of course, our SSRI, which is Zoloft, given for um, uh, depression. I know I'm over my time, but we'll do one more question, guys. Last one. A client diagnosed with dementia is disordered and ataxic and wonders. Which is the priority nursing diagnosis? By now, I know you guys are going to get this right. A, disturbed thought process. B, self-care deficit. C, risk for injury. Or D, altered health care maintenance. And we all know the answer is C, risk for injury. Because who cares about A, B, or D if the patient is injured or dead, right? Right. Guys, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Guys, I want to tell you thank you so much because I feel like it's been forever that I've been trying to get my first, uh, get to my first 1,000 subscribers and I um, just got to it. So guys, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing my videos with your classmates, your friends. Please don't forget to share my video on social media. You might have someone that's in the nursing program that you didn't even know that was in the nursing program that I can be able to help through my videos. Don't forget to please like and subscribe below. Share, press that notification button and please share my videos. Guys, thank you so much for spending this time with me and I'll see you on the next video.